Hello and welcome to Retro Gaming Banter. Today we are taking a look at a recently released RetroPie image which is based on Supreme Ultra. It's called Venom and made by Keo Daikin. Uh, apologies if I pronounced your name wrong. It's compatible with the Pi 4, 4 and 8 gig models and also works on the Pi 400. The image is around 635 gigs, so it will require a suitably large micro SD card or for the best performance a 1TB SSD. Check my link in the description for a very well priced 1TB SSD. Uh, this is the one that I use and has been fully compatible with other 1TB images. So let's get started on what gaming systems and games can be found on the image. The total number of games is 20,186. 3DO we have 69 games. Beats of Rage 61. Commodore Amiga 391. Amstrad CPC 3,277. For the arcade games, it's usually in the low 2000s. On here we have 2,866. With the Atari series, so the 2600, 630 games. 5200, we have 72 games. And the 7800, 68 games. The Atari Lynx has 76 games. And finishing off with the Atari ST, 907 games. The Atomis Wave has 26 games, we'll take a quick look at those. The Commodore 64 has 197 games. ColecoVision 196 games. The Daphne emulator has 16 games available. Sega Dreamcast 282 games. Nintendo Family Computer, 109 games. Nintendo Game & Watch, 66 games. Sega Game Gear, 299 games. Nintendo Game Boy, 666. Game Boy Advance, 1036. Game Boy Advance Hacks, that's 26 games. Game Boy Color, 636 games. Nintendo Game Boy Axe, there's 19 games. Intellivision, 26 games. Sega Master System, 281. Sega Mega Drive, 789 games. And the Japanese, as 196 games. MSX has 667 games and the MSX2 83 games. Nintendo 64 has 308 games. The Naomi arcade system has 181 games. Nintendo DS has 1,986 games. The Neo Geo, 196 games. The NES, 791. I'm guessing this is the Nintendo X going by the small image, uh, but it's the wrong image in the main window. Anyway, there's six games for it. Neo Geo Pocket, black and white. There's nine games available and the colour version uh, 90 games. The Oric has 6 games available. 
PC games, there's three games available. So you've got DOSBox and OpenBOR. PC Engine, 279 games. And the CD-ROM system for it has just two games. On the ports, there's six games available. The Sony PSP has 76 games available. The preview image and videos appear to be missing for the PSP. Um, yeah, not sure what's wrong here. The PSP Minis has 293 games. PlayStation 276 games. Residual VM has one game available, but obviously you can access them inside the emulator, so there should be a few more. Sega Saturn, there's 302 games. Scum VM, there's 62 games available. Sega 32X, there's 36 games available. And Sega CD has 29. The Super Famicom has 486 games and the SG-1000 has 68. The Super Nintendo has 786 games and there's 37 game acts for those. The TurboGrafx-16 has 94 games available. The Vectrix has 20 games. The Video Pack has 49 games. Virtual Boy with 29 games, Wonder Swan Mono as 106, and the colour version as 89. The Sharp X68000 as 236 games, Z Machine with 3 games, Sinclair Spectrum with 377, you've got a Apple Macintosh emulator. There's Kodi and a Pixel Desktop. You've got the Chromium web browser and a Steam Link. After this you have the game collections. These include game series and themes. There's also a light gun collection which has 176 games. The Sindon and Mtrack software is pre-installed and just needs configuring for your gun. And let's check out a few games to see how well they run. Starting with the Dreamcast, games appear to be working very well, running at 60 frames per second. I did not notice any issues at all while I was checking out a few different games. The Atomus Wave works great and the game did not notice any issues, although there was a little slowdown later in the level of a Metal Slug during the boss fight. Nintendo 64 works great and as you can see F-Zero is blazing along at a great speed. The PSP I had some issues with. You will remember that the previews were not loading in the front end. Uh, when clicking on the game to load it may bring up an error. It looks like some games are in PBP uh, PlayStation format so they won't load in PPSSPP. I'm running off a clean install so I don't think this is an issue on my end. Uh, I will update in the description if and when this issue is resolved. PlayStation games have been working fine for some time now so I was not expecting to see any issues with performance. Uh, yeah, there's a great number of games to check out and enjoy. Sega Saturn appears to be running very well, but on Daytona CE the game unexpectedly crashed. I tried the original version and that seems to be working fine. So uh, yeah, it might have just been a one-off issue. Uh, as a note, some games will still have slow performance no matter what image you use. Nintendo DS runs extremely well and I had no issue playing games. Although getting back to the menu or changing the display to showing a single screen uh, just impossible for me. 
I tried every button combination I could think of. Uh, with other images, the buttons are usually uh, defined to work with joysticks or at least a keyboard. Overall, the Venom image is good, but just needs a little polish here and there for it to really stand out. As it is a 635 gig image, I felt that some more larger games could be added to use some of the space up. For example, PC Engine CD games are mostly missing, with just two of them included. And the lack of PC games for DOSBox was also uh, noticeable. The old issue with PSP, I'm not sure if it's something wrong at my end or this was an oversight by the image maker. Uh, there are some playable PSP games in there, but you will need to go through the emulators menu. It's a good Raspberry Pi image with some nice theme designs and related bells and whistles. So yeah, it's definitely worth a try if you're looking for an image with space to spare for your own collections. However, if you want a straight plug in and play image, I would look more towards the Wolfnoz 1TB image, which is pretty much perfect. Uh, you can check out my video on that for more details. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to stay up to date for more RetroPie image overviews. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment and I'll try and answer them. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.